When I was nine years old and in the third grade, I had a big banana marker pen, and it was sweet. I bought it with my own money from the local Woolworths, and I was the only kid in my class to have it. When I came back to the classroom after lunch one day, and I opened my desk, it was gone. It was missing. It was a bad day. And then we had to take a reading test. And partway during the reading test, I looked up and I scanned the room and I saw Melissa Swanson writing suspiciously with a bright yellow big banana. Oh, it was a bad day. And then we went out for recess and my friends and I got into a little tussle with some other guys over squatter rights to the monkey bars. And just as the bell rang to end recess, Mike Wagner took a snowball and threw it at my friend Richie and hit him in the side of the face and called him a sissy and ran to the school. And I picked up a snowball and I hurled it back at Mike and I hit him in the back of his leg. And when I got up to the building myself, he was waiting for me. And he pushed me against the wall and I responded by punching him in the shoulder and using a word I shouldn't have used. And just then, a teacher reached down and grabbed us both. Nailed. We had to stay after school that day. And we couldn't leave until we shook hands and said we were friends. But on the way out of that classroom, Mike leaned next to me and said, my brother is going to beat you up. <laughs> I ran all the way home. It was a bad day. And when I burst through the back door and into my mother's kitchen, I was overwhelmed with the aroma of fresh baked bread right from the oven. Oh, was that nice. My mother baked all of her own bread, and I'm not talking about the frozen loaves or the bread machine kind. I'm talking about the kind that you knead with your own hands and fold with your own heart and let rise in the sun. And when it came fresh from the oven and you drizzled some honey on it, that honey would melt right into it and oh, sweet mama was that good. And it satisfied my hunger on that day. Boy, did it satisfy my hunger. But it wasn't a physical hunger that that bread satisfied. It was, it was my hunger for the comfort, the security, the warmth, and the love of home. And to this day, when I smell fresh bread coming from the oven, it takes me right back. It takes me right back and satisfies that hunger for a mother's love for her family. This is the exact same story that's told again and again, repeated throughout the Old Testament. Whether, whether it's being enslaved in Egypt, being lost in the desert, being conquered by Assyrians or exiled in Babylon, the Jews knew what it meant to hunger for the warmth, the security, and the love of home. For them, manna from heaven wasn't simply about physical food. It was the very real earthly manifestation of God's unending, unyielding love for his children. It's what got them through all of the hardships in life. It's that spiritual something 
that is present and available and there and gets them through the difficult times and satisfies all their hunger. So when Jesus says to them, I am the bread come down from heaven, yeah, it rocks their sides. Wow! How dare he, they say, how dare he assume the identity of the very real manifestation of God's love for his people. As a Jewish man, he's the recipient of that, not the source of it. He should know that. But Jesus, of course, doesn't stop there. He goes on. If you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you will live forever, eternal life. Well, this too raises some eyebrows as it continues to do so today. If we listen to these words with the technical minds of our left brain, we can get uncomfortable and weird it all a bit by. But if we listen to these words with the spiritual dimension, the poetic capacities of our right minds, we understand that what Jesus is saying to us is that if you devour who I am, if you devour the substance and the essence of me, what I believe, what I teach, how I live, how I love, if you take all of that into yourself and make it one with you, just as I devoured the love and the warmth and the tender compassion that was needed and folded into the bread my mother made, if you take all of that and you consume it and make it one within yourself, why? The life and the love you will have will exceed the bounds of time and space. It will go on forever. This is a big, bold statement and it changes everything. It also leaves us with two big, bold questions. For what do we hunger? For what do we hunger? And how do we satisfy that hunger? For most of us, the hardships we face in life fall somewhere between having our big banana pen stolen and being exiled in Babylon. We deal with job loss and divorce and foreclosure and illness and cancer and addiction and abuse and loss and eating disorder and teen pregnancy and we deal with all of this as part of our life's journey. And through it all, do we hunger for the security and the warmth and the love? I bet we do. I bet most of us do. So how do we seek to satisfy that hunger? Well, here it is. Christ breaks himself open and pours himself out and says, devour who I am. <coughs> Consume my life and my love. Bring it into yourself. Eat it up. Feed on it. Drink on it. 
the substance and the essence of me. What I believe, what I teach, how I feel, how I live, and how I love. Devour it, consume it, make it one with yourself. Live as I live, love as I love. With complete mercy and forgiveness, without judgment or discrimination. Why open? Become the body and the blood that I am. And we.